Hello everyone and welcome back to St. Andrew TV. I'm your host Andrew and today I'm going to teach you how to make hardtack. What is hardtack you might be asking? Well hardtack is a flat hard cracker made out of flour, salt, and water. The main reason for hardtack is the longevity, the sustainability, and as we'll get into, it soaks up a lot of moisture while in your stomach, so it gives you the illusion of feeling full. Now, hardtack was prominent with people who were moving countries pre-20th century, whether over the ocean or from country to country in Europe, or even westward expansion here in the United States, where pioneers were moving out west on the numerous trails to start a new life. And it was also a food for pre-20th century military men because of the sustainability to it. Hardtack, if properly cared for, can last three to four months. Now, there isn't a whole lot of nutritional value to hardtack. Like I said earlier, it's just flour, salt, and water. That's it. However, people would put it in their coffee, soup, or water to make it more edible because, as the name suggests, it is very hard in texture. So, without further ado, I'm going to tilt this camera down, and we're going to show you how to make hardtack. All right, so everything we're gonna need is here on this table. And this recipe is from breaddad.com. If you're not gonna follow along with me today in this video, go over to breaddad.com because that's how I made mine. I followed his instructions and it came out sort of nice. So let's get started. We got two cups of flour. We have three quarters of a cup of water and we're gonna take a teaspoon and a half of salt. And this is really simple. This is a survival food, so obviously it's gonna be pretty simple. So we're gonna add the two cups of flour. We're gonna add our three quarters cup of water. And we're gonna add a teaspoon and a half of salt. My mama always said that she doesn't accurately measure everything that you need to measure your ingredients is in your hands already. Here's what it looks like right now. We have to mix it until it has a good consistency to it and it's not sticky. If it is sticky, we're gonna have to add more flour. My mom's quite the baker herself. And, uh, she said that like bread products or flour-based products have to take time to set up. So you gotta be patient with Mixing around. Now that we have it pretty well mixed up, I'm gonna start using my hands. This dough is like subscribers. I need them. <laughs> oh my god, it's so bad. Oh yeah. As I'm kneading this, uh, how you would eat hardtack, I think I said it earlier that you would dip it in liquid, whether it be water, coffee, or some soup broth. Because once this is finished, it is nicknamed molar breakers for a reason. It could potentially crack a tooth, yes, if you don't have great oral hygiene. Or you could have good oral hygiene, you might not drink enough milk. That feels pretty good. It's not sticky. So let's move it over to the board. All right, so the next step is we have our cutting board. Uh, this table's kind of dirty, I'm assuming, because I do all my work out here. But on the cutting board, let's lay down some flour so your dough doesn't stick. And we're going to flatten it. And we're going to use a rolling pin inside to out. That's the old rule of thumb, I guess. And you turn it. Now, as you're rolling it out, you're going to want a piece of dough between about a third to a half inch thick, somewhere in there, after this you cut it up and you put it in the oven. And with the time that you put it in the oven for, you want the same consistency throughout the dough. That seems to be about right. Now, I don't have any nice knives to show on camera. So I have this pizza cutter because I am white trash. I'm just gonna cut it into a square, save the access and make more hard tech with it. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said earlier, this is a survival food. This is if the going gets tough and the shit hits the fan, so to speak. I'm gonna try and make like three by three here. So I'm gonna take take these into thirds and get nine pieces of hardtack out of this. We're gonna make it a tic-tac-toe board of yeast. 
And that's about it. Your final step before you actually place this in the oven is you're gonna take a chopstick. And here's a funny story for you. When I was reading the directions, I go, who has chopsticks just lying around in their house? I did. I actually had chopsticks lying around in my house. But you're gonna take the chopstick and you're gonna poke holes through your dough so the air can get through it and you can dry it out. If you don't dry it out and it becomes moist, I mean, one of the nicknames for hardtack in the early days was worm castle because if your supplies were compromised, insects would notice that there was flour in there and they would have a field day in it. So I'm making these look like saltines because I think it's funny. That's what they look like right there. We're gonna put them on our baking tray. I'll just do a fast version of what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna take the rest of this dough and make a few more squares, a few more biscuits, if you will. Then I'll tell you about the baking process. I'm gonna pause it here for a second and let you know that with the extra dough that you may or may not have, Make sure your crackers or biscuits, what have you, are about the same thickness as the ones that you've already made. These are gonna be baked for a decent amount of time. And basic rule of thumb when it comes to baking, you wanna have a consistency in your thickness if you're working with multiple piles of dough because they might come out more done than others or not as done as others. Just giving you a little bit of baker knowledge. Shout out Wild Mike's. I don't know where they're out of, but I'll try to find a website and link it. Look at that. Now it's time to put them in the oven. So the baking process goes as follows. You're gonna preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. You are gonna place these bad boys in there for 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes is up, you are gonna take these out. You are gonna flip each and every one of them over and put them in for another 30 minutes. All right, lucky enough for you and me, because I'm quite hungry, I went and made a batch earlier today. I have a liquid, I have a batch of hot coffee, and we're gonna give these things a taste test. They just look like overinflated saltines. So let's give them a try, I guess. The smell coming off of them when you put them in the coffee is pretty good. I actually like that. That's not bad at all. I mean, it's kind of bland, but then again, the ingredients are gonna make it as such. That's really not that bad. I thought they were gonna be way harder to eat. Then again, I made them a little thinner, so I could eat them. I bet these would be really good in like soup or chili, especially this time of year in the fall. I actually kind of like them. I bet you could add like cinnamon or peanut butter or something to them to give them a little more flavor. I bet they'd be really, really good. They almost take a, taste like a cookie or like a Danish or something. These came out way better than I thought. I thought these were gonna be bland and tough to eat. And I mean, they're kind of tough to eat because it's dehydrated bread, basically. But they don't taste that bad. If you like saltines or run-of-the-mill crackers or something, I think these will be fine. And these are good survival foods. I mean, they last three to four months if they're kept in a dry space, so. I mean, what the hell, right? Anyway, that's gonna wrap up today's video. That was how to make hardtack, the ultimate survival food. I hope you guys enjoyed and you learned something today. And if you didn't learn something, I hope I refreshed your memory. I'm gonna finish up my plate of hardtack here. Leave a like if you like the video and feel free to leave a comment. Comments are good for videos because it helps YouTube promote that video. And think about subscribing. You're a daisy if you do.